In this series of lectures, we are going to learn about industrial scale cannabis extraction. And we're going to use what we learned about solutions and solubility before to really understand this scaled up version of the process. So we're going to take a minute first to overview uh, some of the key points about solubility and solution formation. So first, let's start with some definitions. Uh, a solution is a homogeneous mixture. That means it's a uniform mixture. It all looks the same. Uh, and it's made up of two things, a solvent and a solute. So when we think about cannabis concentrates in the process of extracting cannabis concentrates from the plant material, we could think of the solute as the cannabinoids and the terpenes that are present in the plant material. Now, we may have some other solutes join those um, in the extraction process, like uh, proteins or uh, parts of the cell like chlorophyll, give it green color, um, fats and waxes, um, and uh, things like that, some sugars. The solvent uh, will be whatever we are using to do the extraction with. And so we'll see things like carbon dioxide, butane, ethanol um, as the focus of this set of lectures, but there's other solvents that are used too. Glycerin is one that's used to make tinctures. Um, most of these are going to be either liquids or gases that can be liquefied or can be a, a supercritical fluid. All right, so let's focus on uh, a simple rule that we use to determine if two compounds can form a solution or not. It's like dissolves like. Uh, and it's really referring to the polarity of the solute and the solvent and that they need to match, at least somewhat, for uh, a solution to actually form and be a homogeneous mixture rather than a heterogeneous mixture where they're kind of just layered on top of each other. Uh, so we find that polar compounds will dissolve in other polar compounds and nonpolar compounds will dissolve in nonpolar compounds. So when we want to extract cannabinoids and terpenes, we want to match it with a solvent that they will actually form that homogeneous mixture with. Uh, so they're gonna have to have relatively similar polarity. So let's overview our solutes. Uh, so cannabinoids are, are basically nonpolar. Um, they do have a few polar bonds um, and also one OH bond that can participate in a um, hydrogen bonding, but it is a large molecule and it has a lot of nonpolar components to it. Uh, kind of outweigh these three or four polar bonds within the molecule. Um, and not only that, it is so large that the London dispersion forces within the molecule, because it's got a very big surface area compared to something like water, um, will actually play a pretty meaningful role in it, in how it behaves. It's also going to be heavier by being larger, and so that'll have an impact on its behavior as well. But uh, when we think about it and how it's going to interact in forming a solution, I think it is uh, reasonable to think of it as a nonpolar solute that has limited solubility in polar solvents. Then we have terpenes, uh, and they're very similar. They're smaller molecules, um, and so they are nonpolar typically. A few of the terpenes that exist will have an OH bond or a polar bond that will have uh, a large number of nonpolar bonds as well. Um, so they typically dissolve in just nonpolar solvents, and they're smaller um, as well, and so that uh, will have some impact on their behavior. I found this uh, graphic from Apita, the engineering, that I think is kind of helpful when thinking about, and this is about the hemp plant, um, the different types of molecules or macromolecules, which just means big molecules <laughs> that are actually in the plant. Uh, so we have got carbohydrates and sugars within the cells, and they are very uh, water soluble and very polar, and they have lots of OH bonds to do lots of hydrogen bonding. And we have proteins, which are huge. They're gigantic. They have really, really, really large molecular weights. They're usually very polar too, um, and they have a very high water solubility. 
There can be portions of proteins that are less water soluble, or but but overall the outside is going to be interacting with water and soluble within it. And then we have our lipids. Um, these are going to be our more nonpolar compounds that will have a lower water solubility, uh, or you could call them hydrophobic. And within that, we have these phospholipids, terpenes, cannabinoids, and then also fats and waxes, which are very long molecules. Um, and so there's a little bit of a range there in terms of polarity. And this one places the terpenes as slightly less nonpolar than the cannabinoids. Um, and that may really, the placement may be more reflective of its molar mass than um, the ratio of polar bonds to nonpolar bonds within the molecule. So uh, we are gonna be focusing obviously on the terpenes and the cannabinoids, but any solvent that we're gonna use to extract those out is likely also going to bring out some fats or phospholipids as well, depending on the solvent. And if we're using a slightly polar solvent, then we may also see some of our smaller molecules like our carbohydrates and sugars or actual proteins um, extract out with the ter terpenes and cannabinoids that we're looking for. So here are the solvents that we're going to focus on that are primarily used in industrial scale extraction processes. We're going to focus on carbon dioxide, butane, and ethanol. Um, now there are others, you may see glycerin tinctures uh, readily available. Um, I have seen uh, some work out there around propane extractions too, which is sometimes used in the essential oil uh, industry. But we're going to focus on these three as they're the most common. Uh, so let's walk through their own polarity. So carbon dioxide or CO2 is a nonpolar gas at room temperature, but it can be compressed into a liquid and it can also be compressed and heated into a super critical fluid as well, which remember this has properties of both a liquid and a gas. Uh, and it's, so it's, it's a, a way to think about it. Is if I have a liquid, it'll have a very definite volume. And I can usually see like in my cup, oh, well, my glass is half full, right? Or half empty. But with a supercritical fluid, it would take up the entire space of the container, just like a gas would, but it would be behaving like a liquid. And so it is, it is both. It's different. Um, and it, it makes a really great solvent. And so here's our molecule. It's pretty simple. It does have a polar bond between the carbon and each of the oxygens. But because this is a linear molecule and these bonds are 180 degrees apart, they're actually going to create a symmetrical uh, disproportionate distribution of electrons. It's kind of a long way to say it. You're going to create a, a, a symmetrical electron distribution and uh, be overall nonpolar because one side of the molecule will be different than the other or one part. And so it is a nonpolar molecule overall. All right, then we have butane, uh, which is C4H10. It is also, um, it is nonpolar. Um, and hopefully that's easy to see because we have all carbon, carbon, and carbon hydrogen bonds. So all of our bonds are, are nonpolar. And, uh, this is a small molecule, but not as small as carbon dioxide. Uh, but it will be a gas at just ambient room temperature, but it is easily compressed into a liquid. It'll become a liquid at zero degrees Celsius um, or, you know, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, or 30 to 34. Um, and so it's very easy to switch between a gas and a liquid without having to do too much work to cool it down. Like you could throw it in your fridge, um, and, and it would be, um, compressed. Or if you think about a lighter too, that's compressed. Uh, the other one we're going to look at is, uh, ethanol which is a polar liquid. Uh, so it's not, there we go. It's not nonpolar like our carbon dioxide and our butane. Uh, we have polar bonds here between the carbon and oxygen and the hydrogen giving us an overall polar molecule. But it's important to note that this is 
far less polar than water. Um, just having those, every extra carbon that has just hydrogen bonds to it that's added to the molecule will decrease the overall molecule's um, polarity. Um, it's also more polarizable, it, like the electrons can kind of shift around a little bit better, but it's bigger and it's gonna have more loaded dispersion forces. Um, created between it and other molecules. And so it is, uh, will form a solution with water, um, but we will also see that it'll be able to dissolve some uh, nonpolar compounds that would never dissolve in water. Uh, so perfect molecule for us to work with as a solvent. It is also small um, and uh, it is a liquid at room temperature. It is not easily uh, converted into a gas that takes a bit more energy. So of all of these, we have um, a series of two nonpolar solvents and one polar solvent. And we're trying to extract out compounds that are, for the most part, nonpolar.